Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. How let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for the week. Rob Greenfield is an American adventurer, environmental activist, and an entrepreneur. Before embarking on this journey, he lived a typical lifestyle where he focused more on materialistic things and his financial wealth. His goal at one point was to become a millionaire before the age of 30, but he decided to watch some documentaries, read some books, and that changed something in his life, something huge. So, Rob, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be uh, nice to be talking with some fellow Wisconsinites. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. So you are very passionate about the zero waste lifestyle. What is zero waste living for people who don't know? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm passionate about living zero waste, but I'm just generally passionate about uh, doing everything we can to try to, you know, not destroy the world and instead benefit the world to live in a way where we add quality of life to the people around us to the other species that we share the earth with and uh you know try to minimize the number of ways that we're that we're causing harm and destruction and such and um yeah zero waste is something that i got into early on in my uh journey towards living a more sustainable life and the concept behind that is just simply in all of our actions uh doing them in a way where it doesn't result in us having to put something in the garbage can, um, but instead results in us putting something back into the earth. Uh, for example, composting or being able to repurpose and reuse things or buying quality things that last a really long time. Just, I mean, the idea of zero waste is just looking at every way that your life interacts with waste and finding ways to, to close that loop and not, not, uh, throw things in a landfill and make it someone else's problem. Yeah, and I think that that whole thing, I grew up on a farm, and we didn't throw anything away ever. There were shelves full of pieces of metal and wood. There was always, you know, well, we may need it in about 14 years, so let's save this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, that kind of started there. When What can an urban food gardener do to help reduce their waste? I mean, we, we talk about this being a you know global problem. It's not just, well, somebody else will deal with it. How can each one of us make our little imprint better? Well, that's a really good thing for a lot of gardeners is that zero waste actually is something that for a lot of them kind of comes as second nature. Uh, the compost bin is absolutely the most, maybe the most essential part of zero waste, you know, up to... 25 to 50 percent of people's garbage can is things that can be composted. So a lot of gardeners are already composting their, you know, their food scraps and their yard waste, but they can make sure to compost their paper and their cardboard. A cotton T-shirt can be composted. Your hair, when you cut your hair, um, paper towels and napkins, you know, anything that can turn back into soil, we can turn back into soil. But the other big thing is, you know, food packaging. One of the greatest ways that we create garbage is through the constant buying of packaged food at the store and one of the greatest ways to prevent that is by growing your own food by supporting local farmers uh, buying food locally and so i would say two of the absolute central tenants to reducing waste come just as a complete you know go hand in hand with growing your own food um, and then if you do buy food at the grocery store, which almost all of our gardeners do, a big thing is finding one that has a bulk food section, especially like local food co-ops, which there's quite a few of them around Wisconsin and Madison. I'm up in Ashland, Wisconsin at this moment visiting my mom, and here we have the Shawamigan Food Co-op. So finding stores where you can bring your own containers and fill up grains and herbs and teas and even your liquids like olive oil and uh, apple cider vinegar and, and so on. Even your soaps you can get in bulk at a lot of these stores. Well, also you talk about what the materials that we're buying. What we've done different in our garden this year, instead of taking the old plastic sack that we get from every store and, and harvesting that way, we've got baskets that we use or crates. So we're not even 
maneuvering bags or we, you know, we, we avoid bags to begin with, but we're using baskets and crates to harvest instead of just throwing it in a bag like we used to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just a, it's just a matter of, you know, one of the best things to do is look in your garbage can, see what's in there, and then really just use critical thinking as to, okay, here's what's in my can, what alternatives are there to do this in a way that doesn't result in something in my can. Well, how can people start living sustainable? Uh, sustainable? Well, yeah. I mean, again, it's so great to be speaking with gardeners because we get that. Like that is really for so many people the thing that changes their lives and often results in them looking at, at everything. Food is a big part of it. So if you're especially like here in Wisconsin, we, we eat a lot of meat and a lot of cheese, a lot of dairy. And one big one is to make sure we're not supporting um, these factory farms, which unfortunately today, most cheese and most meat in Wisconsin is produced with factory farms that really don't have Wisconsin soil and water and air in mind and our future generations. So, you know, we have CAFOs coming in, concentrated animal feeding operations, and there's actually one that there's multiple that are trying to get in up here in northern Wisconsin, and those can cause massive destruction in such a short period of time. So making sure to support uh, local regenerative farming for dairy and for meat, uh, you, know, you know, is one thing. The big thing is, another thing is, you know, figuring out how to spend less time sitting behind the car wheel and spending more time biking and walking um if you're a you know as a gardener you can actually get a trailer that you can hook up to your bicycle and you can put your shovels i've i've had a trailer that i've carried up to 150 pounds of weight on um just going around town um so those you know those are a couple things that come to mind and i'm just going to mention one thing i actually when i decided to make changes to my life, I actually made a long list of changes that I wanted to make. And um, my first, in my first few years, my goal was to make one positive change per week. And in, in uh, two years at one positive change per week, that's a hundred changes. And I made a list of all those changes and then some other ones on my website, just robgreenfield.org slash 100. There's literally a list of tons of positive things that we can do. That's awesome. Um, so, you spent three months last summer in Wisconsin. Well, you spent the whole year of, of last year growing and foraging 100% of your own food. You didn't go to the grocery store or anything like that. You spent three months last summer in Wisconsin, uh, consequently, as well. Could you talk to us about that journey, that whole year of growing and foraging your own food? And obviously, that was one of your goals. What were some challenges? What were some things you learned? What were some things you probably wouldn't do again? Was there anything that scared you? <laughs> anything that maybe scared you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I know we don't have two lines, so I can't get into quite all of it. But um, the idea behind it was, you know, our our global industrial food system is broken, and I wanted to see is it possible in you know the time that we live in here in the United States to step away from this broken food system completely and actually grow and forage all of my own food. So no grocery stores or restaurants, nothing packaged or processed. That included no going to friends' gardens or the farmer's market or a farm either for the entire year because I wanted to learn how to grow or forage every ingredient that I needed. And it was a great year um, over the year, I grew 100 different species in my garden, and I foraged over 200 species in nature, so almost a new species for every day of the year. And I, I, I mean, I actually went into that as a rookie gardener with very little experience. I had only had a couple of four-by-four-foot raised beds in San Diego before starting that. And so I, I, when I started this, was researching, like, how much plant, how much water do you put on a carrot seed or how much sunlight does kale need? Just the absolute basics. And I went from starting from scratch and knowing very little to 10 months after 10 months of preparation, launching into my year of growing and foraging all my food. And I was based in Florida. Um, so we have a different situation down there. Um, you know, year round growing up here, you have to, you have to store a lot of food if you want to be able to be self-sufficient. 
And um, I did spend three months in the summer getting out of the Florida heat and just coming back to my homeland and learning the plants that I grew up around. And uh, it was it was beautiful up here. There's in Wisconsin. We are in such a blessed state. There is hundreds of species of food growing freely and abundantly, both in the wild, in our public parks, and in our gardens. So many of our weeds that we're fighting against are actually some of the most nutritious things in our garden. And I, for sure, that's a big lesson that I'd recommend to people is learn what's growing already, that nature's doing all the work and you can just benefit and work with nature. Awesome. So we're, we're talking with Rob Greenfield and he is um, an eco guru. So now what would you say is the challenge, the biggest challenge of this current generation, like millennials and Gen Z in concerning the environment and the waste for food? Uh, where's maybe possibly the disconnect? And do you think we're getting better at this problem or do you think we're getting worse at this problem? Well, one of the big challenges that we have to deal with today, both my generation and really all generations that are that are alive today, is that we live in a time where most of most things have been made, made very easy and very convenient. We can get almost everything that we need uh, with a click of a button or with, with the swipe of a credit card. Uh, you know, most of it today can be delivered to our doorstep. And so it's allowed us to live in a way where we are so disconnected with where things come from, how they get to us, what the impact they have on our community and the greater community that is our global humanity. And so it makes it so easy for us to just not have to think about the reality behind our actions because it's been designed that we don't see the reality of our actions. So the challenge is overcoming that and really acknowledging our actions and then, you know, really just having the motivation and the time to to go deeper and then decide does that way of life really match our values and our ethics? And if not, you know, questioning that system and seeing if what we really want is to step outside of that so we can really live in a way where our values are, are in action, where our actions are in alignment with our beliefs. And to answer your question as to whether things are getting better, in certain ways things are getting better. I mean, we've seen this giant boom in the United States of people growing their own food this year with feed companies having all-time record sales, selling out in a matter of weeks at the beginning of the pandemic. And we've seen, you know, more and more people getting out on bicycles and wanting to get away from cars. And we've seen a lot of positive things, but the reality is, is that in many ways our trend is definitely globally continuing towards more plastic, more fossil fuels, more consumption. So, you know, it's easy to get into a bubble and feel like things are just getting better, but it's also important to look at the reality of the situation. And basically what I would say is that whether things are getting better globally does not have to affect whether we grow more of our own food, ride bicycles more, love our neighbors more, connect with people, share resources, and do the best that we can. If things are getting better, it's a great reason to do the best we can. And if things are getting worse, it's a great reason to do the best we can, live great lives, and help others around us to do so as well. Well, yes, and and you talked about a little bit earlier uh, what about motivation. But what can we? What can you tell people who are motivating to make changes in their world, but don't know where to start, or are afraid that if they begin to do it, they will get ridiculed by their friends or family? Yeah, well, I would definitely say a couple things. One is start where you are. Don't look. I mean, like. You know, you just called me, I think you said environmental guru. I don't consider myself that, but I'm, I know other people do. So whatever you do, don't listen to me and, and like say you got to start where I am. I started back at square one in 2011. So you have to start where you are. You have to embrace where you live, where, you know, the situation that you're dealing with, the you know, the family that you have, um, how old you are, your physical capabilities. Um, your monetary capabilities. You have to start where you are, not where anybody else is. And then along with that, start small. See, the thing is people look at the future and they forget that you'll never get to that future point without making it one step at a time. So don't 
like, don't put yourself down for making small steps. The key is making one small step. And when you've completed that one, you make another small step. And when you've completed that one, you make another small step. Just like gardening, you get a little better, you grow more food, you grow more food the next year. And you can do that with all of these aspects of, of living more sustainably. Another suggestion is start with what you're most excited about. If you're excited about food, start with food. If you're excited about zero waste, start with that. If you're excited about you know, community-oriented action, helping others grow their own food. Start with that. Do the things that you're the most excited about where it doesn't actually take energy, but it actually gives you energy. And by doing this, it creates a just a feedback cycle of motivation, of positive endorphins that helps you, you know, do, do more and more and more and just build that foundation to eventually get to the life that you, you might be striving for. Fantastic. It's been really nice having you on the program. Um, so where can people find out more about you? Yeah, you can just join me on social media. Uh, I, I have a lot of videos on YouTube, youtube.com slash Rob Greenfield, uh, gardening videos. You can follow along my year of growing and foraging all my food. And then just type in my name, Rob Greenfield, into Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, and you'll find me there. And my website is just robgreenfield.org, and that's a pretty infinite uh, source of, of of knowledge for living sustainably uh, for people that are, you know, wanting, they want to know where to start. That website has got the information for you. Well, Rob, we greatly appreciate the time you've granted to Holly, myself, and all of our listeners and the information you've shared with all of us, how we can all be better stewards of the land and the little place that we live in each one of our worlds. And I greatly appreciate all the great work you're doing for the people of Wisconsin and all the inspiration and education you're spreading. So thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.